All right, in this video, I'm gonna go over uh, solving two variable linear systems, something that I'm hoping you feel pretty confident about uh, in terms of um, something you did in Algebra 1. All right, so a couple of things that you should remember about these systems of two linear equations is for the solution, we kind of have kind of three uh, distinct outcomes here. The most common one that you'll see is where you have one solution, right, an ordered pair x and y, that would make both of these equations true. Then you'll find sometimes you have parallel lines where they never intersect, so we have no solution. And then sometimes you actually will find that the two lines are the same or on top of each other. In geometry, you would have used that word coincident, right? And that is where we say they have infinitely many solutions. And just, just know, you may not <clears throat> ever really get tested on this, but it's good to know that that doesn't mean all real numbers or everything works. It just means that there are infinite um, ordered pairs that would make that true. Not every order pair would work, but you'd have infinitely many going in any direction. Okay, so let's go ahead and do a system and solve the system by graphing. So you'll notice the second system is already in slope-intercept form, and this other one is in standard form. So I'll go ahead and rewrite this into slope-intercept form to make it a little bit easier to graph. So moving that x to the other side, I get the opposite of x plus 6. Okay, so again, you can graph it in standard form that's totally fine but just so that we are at a place where uh, it's a little bit easier i'd like to put it in slope intercept form okay so graphing that one i have positive six for the y-intercept the slope is negative one so up one left one and down one right one all right i can go ahead and graph this All right, so there is my y equals negative x plus six. And then I have this one, I highlighted in yellow, which is already in slope intercept form. So I have negative one for the y intercept. Three fourths is the slope. So one, two, three, one, two, three, four. You can already see that that is our solution. One, two, three, one, two, three, four. So it's where they intersect, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. All right, and so once I graph this one and see that intersecting point, I'll go ahead and write the solution as an ordered pair. Almost there, sorry. There we go, close enough. All right, so there's that one. And that ordered pair solution is right here, which is four comma two. So plugging in four for X and two for Y into each of these uh, linear equations would make the uh, statements true. Okay, let's do some elimination. So this is where we're going to eliminate or cancel out one of the variables. All right, again, the three kind of different solutions are what could occur, all right? And ultimately, with this kind of thing, is uh, it's up to you. There are a lot of options, so the way I do some of these might be different from the, the numbers that you use, but ultimately, the same goal of eliminating one of the variables, that's what you're trying to do. So whether you eliminate the x or I eliminate the y, you eliminate the x, it doesn't matter. It shouldn't uh, result in any uh, different answer. Let's try the first one here, A. I probably will not do all of these because I know you guys are going to be watching this video after uh, taking a test. <clears throat> Excuse me, and I don't want to you know drone on and on and on. I want to give you guys a chance to try some on your own. So the first thing I notice with this uh, equation or system here is that I can't just add straight uh, down or subtract right away to get rid of or eliminate a variable. So I notice there's a three and a two in front of the x. So if I multiply this first one by two and the second one by three, I will get the same coefficient. Now, if you want to do this way, which I, I'm totally fine with, you are going to use subtraction, right? Because 6x minus 6x would be zero, all right? But if you want to make sure you're using addition, your teachers in Algebra 1 would have said, okay, just make one of them negative, and then you can use addition. So if I kind of move this way, multiplying every uh, term in these equations by their respective coefficients, so that's 6x plus 10y equals negative 8, so that's times 2. And then negative 6x, be careful here, a negative times a negative is a positive 9y. And then 29 times 3 is going to be negative 
what is that? Uh, 87, I believe. I'm pretty sure that's right. Okay. So now, as I said, you don't have to do the um, that negative. You would just end up using subtraction. But because I decided to do that, I am going to use addition now. So the idea is now if I add these equations together, I will end up eliminating the x variable. So it just becomes 19y equals negative, what is this, 95. Okay, so moving that 19 to the other side, I get 95 divided by 19, negative 95 would be a negative 5. Okay, now just as you hopefully remembered from algebra 1, this is not finished. This is just one uh, piece of that you know, x and y that we're going to end up with this one solution problem. So just go back to one of the original equations and plug it in. It doesn't matter. I'll choose the first one. So 3x plus 5y equals negative 4. So I'm going to plug in that y to be negative 5. So I get 3x minus 25 equals negative 4. Move the minus 25 over with addition. You get negative 4 plus 25, which is going to be 21. So x equals 7. So we're saying that the solution here is going to be the ordered pair 7 comma negative 5. So this is our one solution uh, ordered pair. Okay? Anyway, that's how you do the elimination. All right? I am going to jump to substitution, I think, at this point. Let me check my time. I just want to be cognizant of trying to you know do so much here. Um, it's already been five minutes into the video, so I'm going to go to substitution, all right, just so I can keep things moving, all right? But again, um, I will have a key with everything shown with all my work, um, so you can always try some of these on your own and then go back and check to see if you've done it right, okay? All right, let's try, let me see if I can do one that's going to end up being not a solution or a no solution or um, infinitely many solutions. I'm thinking maybe... Maybe B. No, I don't think B will. Um, all right. Let's just go with letter D. I'm going to do D. Now, just be honest with you. You know, sometimes your teachers have said, hey, you must use elimination. You must use substitution. Okay, fine. You got to follow the instructions. Right? It says substitution. But unless I see a system that is set up where it has like one of them says Y equals like part D, I'm going to be honest with you. Part D is the only one I would do if I had the choice to be substitution. I use elimination for A, for B, and for C. Definitely for B and A. They're already set up to be in standard form. C is a little bit more, uh, you could probably convince me to do substitution because you have Y equals. Um, okay, I'll go ahead and do that one. But the idea is that definitely A and B, I would definitely do elimination. Now I'm gonna show you my work substitution, but ultimately, uh, you know, if you've got the choice, you're gonna find, at least in my opinion, most students will tell you, elimination is the fastest way. So I'm gonna use Part D for substitution. The idea is the way you set this up is the Y value in this equation, I'm gonna substitute in the what Y is equal to and put it in the other one. So I'm gonna rewrite 3X minus 2Y equals seven. And where it says Y, I'm going to put that equation of 3 halves x plus 5. Don't forget to bring down the equal 7. All right, distribute that negative 2, and you get negative 3x and then minus 10. 3x, oh, perfect. 3x minus 3x is actually 0. All right, so this just becomes negative 10 equals 7. Now, when you get something like this where it is a false statement, right, negative 10 does not equal seven, right? This is false. Then when you get a false statement, this is where these lines in this letter D, I'm so glad I chose letter D. The, these lines are actually parallel lines, all right? Because we get a false statement, what that's telling you is that there's no solution to this system. And if there's no solution, there's no intersection point that would make both of these become true statements, then they are parallel lines, all right? So I'm gonna write no solution. These are parallel lines. Okay, they've got the same slope, but different y-intercepts. While I'm here, all right, because that's, I think, what happened if you did, um, I think, the letter C. I'll confirm once I do my key. But uh, while I'm here, if this had been a true statement, right, say this had said 7 equals 7 or negative 10 equals negative 10, right? If you get a true statement, then that means that they are the same line. They're coincident. They're on top of each other. So that's where you would write infinitely 
many solutions. Okay, so just keep that in mind um, when you're doing these. Okay, now we've already shown you uh, a graphing one on that very first page where it was equalities. Now we're gonna talk about solving some linear inequalities by graphing, okay? So this is where you probably had your teacher showed you how to have different colors or you might've done like different ways to shade, whatever you feel confident with. I mean, like you should have practice with this. I'll defer to your, your method. Um, but ultimately I'll show you a couple ways that I would do it. And then, um, you know, it's up to you on which one you wanna decide. Okay, so I'll do the first one cause it requires kind of the most work here. I would recommend on all of these, these systems, to put them into slope-intercept form first. So I'll go ahead and rewrite the first one. Then I'll rewrite the second one here. Okay, so now moving to slope-intercept means I move the x to the other side with subtraction. All right, notice I will, I'll show my work here, I will divide everything by negative two. And when you do that, like we've been practicing or like we just finished with that test, if you divide an inequality um, with a negative, you're going to have to switch the sign, all right? And then a negative 1x divided by a negative 2 is a positive 1 half x, and then negative 2 over negative 2 is positive 1. All right, so that's the first one. Let's do the next one. Move the x over with subtraction, you get negative x minus 1. That one I don't have to do any division because that y is just by itself. Okay, so let's go and graph each of these. I'll graph this first one, 1 half x plus 1. So 1 half x plus 1, 1 is the y-intercept, and then I've got slope of 1 half, so up 1 over 2. Down 1, left 2. Okay, now when you do this from your days in Algebra 1, make sure that when you do this line, you do that, that dash line, right? Because with this one, I don't have the or equal to underneath with that inequality. So I am gonna use that dotted or dashed line to do this. So hopefully you see the dotted or dashed line. All right, so there's that one. Now, it's up to you on how you did this um, in your days in algebra one. I got to a place with my older students that I started to um, just tell them like, put an arrow for the direction you would shade and then just figure out um, where they overlap and then just shade that. But for this, for these purposes, I'll go ahead and shade everything uh, for this solution in red. You'll notice the inequality symbol says less than. So for less than, unless it is a vertical line, right, you wanna think below the line, okay? So greater than would be shading above the line, less than is shading below the line. Get a little tricky with some of the steeper slopes, but remember that phrase, less than, below the line, greater than, above the line, okay? The only thing that would be tricky would be if you did letter B here, B has a, a vertical inequality, okay? So shading below means I'm gonna be shading like this. Okay, so I'm gonna just stop there. Now I'm gonna graph the other one, I'll use blue. All right, the y-intercept is negative one, slope is negative one, so up one, left one. Now this line is going to be a solid line because it does have the or equal to. So when I make this one, I am gonna actually use that solid line. Okay, my solid line, oh, yeah, I missed it, there we go, okay. And this one, again, for shading purposes, this symbol says less than, all right, so again, remember less than is below the line, so below the line is gonna be shading like this. And your solution to these linear inequality systems, or systems of linear, linear equalities, I should say, is where they overlap. So when you're looking at this, you should see kind of three different colors, in air quotes. So you definitely should see red. I guess I can help you here. You should definitely see the red. You should definitely see the blue. But the one that is our solution is where you see both of them. So the blue and the red overlap is where you're gonna be see our solution. Now, again, this is fine for like showing you that you're the work and you're done. But the idea is that, okay, could you tell me an ordered pair that would be a solution to this system of linear inequalities? And you could, right? I'll just try to use hot pink so I think you can see it. But this point right here is in that overlap region. That's negative three comma negative five, right? So negative three, and there's you know obviously infinitely many points that would work. But negative three, negative five, if I plugged it into this system, would make true statements for both of those inequalities. Okay, so that's kind of how this whole thing works. 
All right, hopefully that was just a review and you feel good with that. I'm not gonna do B, but if you do B, just be on the lookout for this. This is a vertical line, right? At X is greater than negative two. So when it's, I've told you guys, greater than for all your lines, except for the vertical ones is above, you shade above, less than you shade below, but for vertical lines, greater than you shade to the right and less than you shade to the left. So that's the only kind of uh, nuanced thing there. Let's take a look at part C. I think I'm good on time. I'm trying to be aware of how much time you're gonna be doing um, listening to my voice after you take this test. Sorry, I'm almost there. Okay, so this one says, which X values make the ordered pair X comma negative five a solution to the system of inequalities represented by the graph below. So you can see the three different colors. You got light purple, light purple, and then the darker purple. So any point in this dark purple area would be a solution to this set of uh, linear systems, or excuse me, system of linear inequalities. So it does tell me the Y value is negative five. So my thought is if I put all the points here that have the Y value of negative five, okay, that's gonna be here, 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 here. Now be careful here. I'm not gonna put a dot there because, do you see how it has the, like the dashes of the dotted line? That would be not included. So what are the X values associated with those pink dots? That looks like it starts at three and it goes up until seven, but not including seven. So the one I'm gonna choose is this one here because three is included, three comma negative five would work, but seven comma negative five would not, which is why it doesn't have the or equal to underneath. Okay, let's do one more. I know there's a three on here. I'm going to do one because I'm already at 15 minutes. I want to kind of keep it under 20 or as close to 20 as I can. And I'm going to do part C. All right. So part C and I'll let you guys uh, do some practice on your own. So we have the length of a rectangle is equal to triple the width. So basically when you read these sentences, <clears throat> you're going to take these words and turn them into uh, linear equations. And hopefully that will help you write a system. So this first one, we have the length of a rectangle. So the length is equal to, or it even says is equal, to triple the width. So three times the width. So 3W. The perimeter is 86 centimeters. Now it's a rectangle, right? If you wanted to draw the rectangle, you could, right? The rectangle, if we have length, width, width, length. Hopefully you remember the idea here is that for the perimeter, it is add them all the sides up. So the perimeter is gonna be two times the length plus two times the width. And we said it has to equal to 86 centimeters. So what are the dimensions of the rectangle in centimeters? So this is a system, all right? And I, like I said, you have different ways to solve this, all right? You have graphing, you have substitution, and you have elimination. This is an instance where I would use substitution. It's rare, but it does happen because I have L equals three W. So I'm gonna replace this L right here with three W. All right, so I'm gonna do that up here. So I'm gonna write two times three W plus two W equals 86 centimeters. Distribute, you get six W. Combine like terms, eight W. And dividing by eight means that I'm going to get, let's see what that decimal is. 86 divided by eight is 10.75 centimeters. Okay, so that is my width. Now remember it wants the dimensions of the rectangle in centimeters, so that means the length and the width. The length is equal to triple the width. All right, so we can do three times that width of 10.75 centimeters. All right, so multiplying 10.5, excuse me, 10.75 times three is gonna give me 32.25 centimeters, okay? So the dimensions of the rectangle is 10.75 centimeters by 32, sorry, try it right here, 0.25 centimeters. All right, so that is it for this video. Again, take a moment, I, I know I apologize uh, for my F period that I wasn't here to kind of go over this in person, but come see me with office hours, questions, uh, and try your homework, all right? Good luck.